comes down to this. The pulsating, entertaining, at times crazy Serie A season has come down to the final day. A straight shootout between Milan and Inter for the league title. We are always with you, reads the choreography. And despite this being a home game for Sassuolo, there are 18,000 Rossoneri fans in at Mape Stadium, a ground that only holds a shade over 21,000. Whatever happens, this is where the Scudetto will be decided. Either Milan do their bit and avoid defeat against the Nero Verdi and are champions for the 19th time, or they fluff their lines and hand the momentum and the opportunity to the Nerazzurri. It's a good evening from me, Patrick Hendrick, alongside former Inter defender Massimo Paganin. Good evening, Massimo. Good evening, Patrick. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the short time for tonight. Uh, a great match, just for, for the pressure and uh, for the, 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 the what, what, what it means for, for, for Milan the, the, this, the, this night, this match tonight. Um, it's not an easy game because, uh, as I said, all the pressures is on Milan's shoulder. On the other side, we have uh, Sassuolo that won against Milan, against Inter, against Juventus during this season, and in a single in a single match could be a very dangerous team. And Milan know that all too well, having lost the reverse fixture against Sassuolo, 3-1 at San Siro, so they will be wary of the threat the Nero Verdi posed this evening. They will play with freedom, they always play on the front foot. But a reminder of the situation at hand, Milan start the final weekend of the season, two points clear of Inter. And unlike other leagues going on elsewhere, the tiebreaker in Serie A is head-to-head -head results. And Milan, having drawn the first derby with Inter, having won the second, can afford themselves a draw this evening. Inter have a better goal difference, but that does not matter one jot. As long as the Rossoneri avoid defeat, they would end an 11-year wait for the Scudetto. 2010-11, the last time they won it. Zlatan Ibrahimovic was part of the Rossoneri side to do it. He is once again part of the Milan group, albeit in a slightly different role. The Rossoneri have barely put a foot wrong in recent weeks. Five straight victories to take them to the cusp of the Scudetto. They won't need to worry about what happens between Inter and Sampdoria, provided they do their bit here in Reggio Emilia. And whilst there are huge numbers of Rossoneri fans inside the ground, outside the stadium too, there will be pressure. This is a young group of players. They are still a side finding their way under the steady hand of Stefano Pioli. But they've already overcome so many hurdles, they've already secured so many milestones that this is just the latest test. Daniele Doveri there, just reminding us of how warm it is in the Reggio Emilia, 33 degrees. It is unseasonably warm for late May. But Milan victorious against Atalanta. They beat Verona before that. They got the job done against Fiorentina and Lazio. They are so close that it is now within touching distance. And yet, Sassuolo and their supporters won't mind playing party poopers. There are plenty of headline-grabbing names in that Nero Verdi side, and we've become familiar with them, not just this season, but in recent years as well. Berardi, Scamacca, Raspadori, there's Fratesi too. More than one of those players has been linked with Inter. We will try and kick off simultaneously, both here and at San Siro, which is why Daniele Doveri, the match official, is just being held back, but now we get the all clear. To quote Stefano Pioli, Milan have been Serie A's best side this season, but no prizes are handed out after 37 matches. If the Rossoneri are to be crowned Italian champions, 
They must avoid defeat at Sassuolo. Pinero Verdi, however, have won the last two meetings between the pair. It all comes down to this. A title decider on the final day at Mape Stadium. It is Sassuolo against Milan. Well, if you weren't familiar with the architecture of Mape Stadium, you'd be absolutely convinced this was a Milan home game. It's not the case. Alessio Dionisi Sassuolo entertain the Rossoneri. But they have absolutely dominated here. Seizing tickets in a heartbeat. They even crashed the Sassuolo website. Such was the demand for seats in this part of the world. They have travelled in hordes all expectant, all desperate to see Milan once again win the Scudetto. Davide Calabria once again leads the Milan side and there Gianmarco Ferrari, the Sassuolo skipper, affording himself a joke with his opposite number, perhaps an indication of just how calm Sassuolo are ahead of this, which could work out either way, they could play with freedom. Well, they could be disinterested. Daniele Doveri, hugely experienced, closing in on 200 games at Serie A level. And uh, Gianluca Aureliano, our video assistant referee, big weight on his shoulders tonight. Alessio Dionisi makes three changes to the team that won at Bologna. Kiriakopoulos returns after a one-match ban to relieve Rogerio. Ayhan is preferred to Kirikesh, while Maxim Lopez comes back in for Traore. Domenico Berardi has 10 goals against Milan on his CV. Stefano Pioli has the luxury of naming the same starting 11 for the third straight match. The Rossoneri side includes May's Player of the Month, Sandro Tonali, and the league's best goalkeeper, Mike Mignon. Olivier Giroud once again leads the line. done a great job Alessio Dionisi promoted as champions with Empoli last season in the second tier he has followed in the footsteps of Roberto De Zerbi in producing attractive football Stefano Pioli is the coach of the month for May but in order perhaps to be the coach of the year his side need to avoid defeat this evening Olivier Giroud, one of the few older heads in this Milan side, but it is his first season at the club. And however well they've played in recent weeks, Massimo Paganin, the pressure will be different tonight, won't it? Yes, of course. I know that they played the last few matches, and uh, they played very well, but tonight could be different. It depends on them, all on them, because it depends on the approach of the, of the match. And uh, we have just to wait a few minutes to see what will happen on the pitch. We are up and running in Reggio Emilia. 90 plus minutes to decide who will be champions. Will it be Inter or will it be Milan? And Fratesi immediately concedes the first corner of tonight in front of that Milan end. You see immediately the, the left lane of, 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 of Milan that's inspirated Leao and Teo Hernandez are fantastic they did fantastic goals in the, in the last match taken short by Rafael Leao and then a slightly loose touch back towards him that is justice because the replay showed us it should have been a goal kick in the first place oh, it doesn't matter you know the, the, uh, it's just the first play of the match we have just to, to see what will happen Giroud tried to feed it through towards Rafael Leao. Here's Maxime Lopez who makes Sassuolo tick. Giroud gives chase. He's got there ahead of his compatriot. And Consigli with some smart handling. 
and we see at the start that uh, Milan will decide to play in the defensive half of, of uh, Sassuolo. Here we see Giroud, nobody was in, 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 the, in the box, so Giroud just tried to, to, shot the, the, to cross that ball inside the box. But Milan will make a high pressure, and uh, Sassuolo have to be good enough to, to build up from the back and try to find some spaces. Skamak here. Had Giroud scored there, it would have been reminiscent of Marco Van Basten, albeit for Holland, a former Milan player himself. Muldur, Skamakra on the half turn, trod on the ball, and now Tonali can release Rafael Liao. Milan keen to make a fast start. Rafael Liao trying to play it through towards Tonali, the combination we saw at the Bentegodi against Verona. Tonali. Maxime Lopez doing the defending. Milan know all about fast starts on this ground. December 2020, Rafael Liao scored the fastest ever goal in Serie A, 6.76 seconds. They take something in the first six minutes tonight, you'd wager. Teo Hernandez, his Kessier, his last game as a Milan player. Did he get a nudge from Berardi? That's Tomori. Calmly done by Ihan. Berardi having a brilliant season. Skamak here. Berardi again. That's what Sassuolo can produce. Very easy on the eye. Kiriakopoulos. Matteo Serriki. This is Raspadori now. They will play their football, they will keep possession, and they will pose problems for Milan. Of that, you can be certain. Ihan, nicely done for Kiriakopoulos. Matteo Serriki. Kiriakopoulos, he's got half a yard to deliver, and there was Mignon. It's a team that we know that could score a lot of goals. They scored 66 during the, uh, 60, 64, pardon, during the season but they conceded 63. It means that every match they are 2 nil down. So, anyway, it's not so easy to play against them because they produce a lot of opportunity. But anyway, they conceded a lot. That, that's what Milan have to, to think about in, in, this, in this match. So we have just to, to see, to wait what uh, the, the spaces in between the lines that for sure Sassuolo will, concede, will, will give to, to Milan. They won at Juventus this season, they won at San Siro on both visits against Inter and Milan. Maxim Lopez, Ferrari. Maxim Lopez finding Berardi. Ferrari for Kiriakopoulos, Scamacca waits in the middle, so too Fratesi. Raspadori. Matteo Serriki. Milan might have to soak up some pressure. Sassuolo will look to monopolise possession. Fratesi between the lines. This is ominous. Fratesi lets fly. It's an important block. Kessier in the way. Now Berardi, he can hit them. Tomori got a toe to the ball. Salamakas beaten to it by Kiriakopoulos. Berardi! It's off target. We know that Sassuolo is, is one of the teams that have more ball, ball possession during the, during the during the match, you know. And uh, what Milan don't have to do is concede them, you know. That's a lot of space, a lot of time, and give them the chance to come into the match and have uh, that enthusiasm, uh, to, to, you know, to play the, the match like this. Because uh, we know they are young players, and when they 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 used to to play like this. Uh, they, they, they have a lot of confidence. We saw Grazia Capitano, thank you, captain, a message for Francesco Magnanelli, who retires after 17 seasons with Sassuolo. Matteo Serriki has brought down Teo Hernandez. We may well see Magnanelli as the game wears on, but didn't start tonight. Teo Hernandez once again causing problems. His goal against Atalanta, one that Rossoneri supporters have been replaying time and time again this week. 
We will keep you abreast of events at the Meazza, where it's still goalless after half a dozen minutes between Inter and Sampdoria. But Milan need not worry about that, provided they can get the job done here. And when you have the chance to draw, it's much easier to do so. If you go ahead and take the lead, it goes without saying. Salamakas with the set piece, Giroud! And Consigne to the rescue. Big chance for Milan. As we said, Sassuolo conceded a lot, conceded a lot. And in this situation, Giroud was alone on the far post and tried to head that ball on goal. Rafael Liao, ball just skipped away from him. But that was the man you wanted the chance to fall to. So good in the air, Olivier Giroud. Too easy for him, it was Kamaka in that situation. He's an attacking player and uh, he, he leaves too much space behind him. He loses the man inside the box and uh, he will just try to give power to that ball, not try to, to find uh, maybe the, the, the far post on, on the left side uh, of Mirante. Giroud has scored some very valuable goals in Milan's Consigli title push. Consigli, sorry, it's my, my fault. Matteo Serriki under pressure, Tonali's one possession, and here is Rafael Liao. What a block that is from Ferrari. And this is the second chance in a few minutes again, Sassuolo considered too much that ball. Maxim Enrique had to, to give it away, but a fantastic save by Ferrari that arrived there. He will see again, you, you can't do that, you can't do that in front of your, of your box. A great, great chance for, for Milan, a great save by Ferrari. It will be an open game, we expected as much, we promised as much, and it's delivering. Teo Hernandez with the corner, and Tomori was there. And once again, Milan goes so close to the opening goal, that is three chances in quick succession. This time, Fikayo Tomori denied. Again, another, another great chance, what to say. In two minutes, they have three enormous ch chance. You know, chance to to to, sh to score this the goal. We saw a different approach on this match. And here's Salamakas. He's in behind. Alexis Salamakas. Consigli came up big with the save. Sassuolo won the flag. But we've seen this before from Consigli, notably against Inter this season. Great run from Salamakas. And the Sassuolo shot stopper stayed big. Another look at this Tomori chance. Seemed to hit his chest. Maxime Lopez on the line. Perhaps came off his left arm, Massimo. No, of course, it was on the knee, uh, for sure. But anyway, another great chance, as we saw, and Maxime Lopez just safe on the line. Teo Hernandez sends it in. Maxime Lopez saying the ball went beyond the byline and out for a goal kick, and that's why the whistle's gone. As, as we said, not, not so easy. Of course, it's an emotional, an emotional game, you know, a lot of chances for, for, for Milan in the first minutes. But if you do not score, you see, maybe it was an end ball that one. You said, you said well, by Tomori in that situation. But anyway, uh, Sassuolo have to pay attention because they don't have to concede to Milan too much chances. Of course, as I say, the motivation is different. Milan have to win this game, not not try, not not lose. But anyway, are on the pitch to show that they are they deserve to be to lead the league. That's why I think that Milan would try to win this, this match anyway. They've certainly taken the right approach. They've been proactive as opposed to passive. Stefano Pioli pointing to objective data, namely the league table, something that has been pinned up in the dressing room and the training ground at Milanello for a long while now. Milan are driven by the feeling of being underappreciated. They feel slighted. The, the general consensus has been that Inter are the better side, stronger squad. Yet purely correctly said we've been the best side so far we need to prove it once again tomorrow that was during his press conference yesterday we didn't have the luxury of hearing from Alessio Dionisi Sassuolo instead gave club captain Francesco Magnanelli the forum to express himself Maxime Lopez Matteo Serriki in too much of a hurry Kessier nice drop of the shoulder still Kessier 
Rafael Liao, lovely footwork, and Cotsinu spilt it! And Krunic tried to poke it towards Giroud. Still Milan come again, Teo Hernandez. He's lost out to Berardi, but Daniele Doveri blows the way of a Milan free kick. Another great chance for, for Milan, again, again. Uh, as we said, different approach. You know, you will see Te Leao that tried to, to shot on, on the far post. And here, Consigli that couldn't catch that ball. The ball remained in the box. But Milan has tried to, to push, has tried to put uh, Sassuolo under pressure, and try to make them consider uh, an error. As we said, when you concede 63 goals during a season, it means that all the time you, you give something to the other team. Sassuolo did win the last game quite comfortably at the Dallara, just down the road, 3-1 at Bologna, but this is a sign that ships six recently at the Maradona against Napoli. So they can be exposed defensively. Clip forward by Tonali, no one made the run. Muldur can watch it behind if he wishes. Fioliel, the man who scored the opening goal in that victory against Atalanta, was then bettered by Teo Hernandez. Surging forward for more than half the pitch, scoring a sublime solo strike. On by Muldur. Away by Tamori, that's Kessier, now Teo Hernandez. Some of those bright young things for Sassuolo have been linked with moves away this summer. Raspadori, Scamacca, Fratesi. There's even talk of Milan going in for Domenico Berardi with the greatest respect to Alexis Salamakis and Junior Messias. It would be an upgrade. Forward by Mignon, flicked on by Giroud. This is Rafael Liao. Salamakis demanding the ball. Instead, it's wide for Teo Hernandez. Teo Hernandez with the cross, Giroud attacked it. Salamakas gets there ahead of Kiriakopoulos. Great intensity from Milan. Alexis Salamakas. But now Sassuolo can break, Maxime Lopez. But for once, their slick passing has gone awry. That's a foul by Calabria. It's the first time that Scudetto has gone to the final day since the 2009-10 season when Jose Mourinho's Inter won in Siena to pit Roma to the Scudetto. Inter once again involved, albeit in the role of underdogs. Teo Hernandez, and now it's Rafael Liao, space to move into. Rafael Liao, Teo Hernandez, it's a corner, Fratesi with the lunge. Again, too easy for Milan. On the left, the left lane, you know, with Teo Hernandez and Leao, too easy for them to receive the ball, overlapped by Teo Hernandez, and uh, he gave a look inside the box, tried to find Giroud, maybe with a cross, with a short cross. It's, uh, it's a difficult situation for, for Sassuolo. Sassuolo under the cosh here. Milan trying to turn the screw. Teo Hernandez sends it in. Once again, it's too close to Consigli. Consigli has only kept three clean sheets all season, but one of those was at San Siro against Inter, that really impressive 2-0 win for the Nero Verdi. Maxime Lopez, Matteo Serriqui, Berardi beginning to wander in field. Ferrari, Kiriakopoulos. Hand. He's 
lost it to Rafael Liao. Giroud's in support. Rafael Liao now with the pace to test I had. Rafael Liao for Giroud. Another big goal in the title race from the Frenchman. Milan have the breakthrough. And it is the poster boy of the Scudetto. Olivier Giroud makes his mark once again. And the Mappe Stadium comes to life. It is a sea of red and black. Another chance, but too easy this time. Uh, Ayan just tried to control that ball. Two against one. He, he lose that ball. And he will see one against one. No one give him a hand and lay out too much time for him. Just lucky, maybe, because that ball was deflected and Ferrari couldn't drive to that ball that passed through his legs and through legs of Consigli. But uh, anyway, Milan deserved to be one nil in front because they had too much chances in the last few minutes. The man who settled the derby, the derby which gives Milan the edge in a head-to-head record, but it's his opening goal here that gives the Rossoneri the advantage in the title race. Olivier Giroud now moving into double figures in Serie A. And in his first season in Italian football, he might well end up as an Italian champion. But hang on a moment, here comes Muldur and Sassuolo. Berardi feeding it through for Fratesi, away by Tomori. The early goal they would have been so desperately seeking to settle the nerves. Maxime Lopez, Berardi, Tomori with the challenge, Kessier helping out. And everyone is chipping in for Milan. That has been the story of this season. At the moment they are too concentrated, too strong. They deserve, they want, they want this result too much. Nothing to do for Sassuolo. They can't create some problems. And we see again what, what, what Leao did. We saw that we know that one against one it's impossible to mark him. And on the other side, Giru that moved very well inside the box and tried to find the space to shot on goal. We saw the Milan senior management, which is bolstered by a particularly special presence this evening at Mape Stadium, Paul Singer, who's the head of Elliot Group that owns the club. Now it's Calabria's ball in, and Ferrari had to stretch. El Chirou might have had a second. Chirou with the equaliser at the Olimpico against Lazio, a game that Tonali won deep into added time. He keeps coming up with the goods. In the all-important matches, got the winner at Napoli too, plus that brace in the derby. Taken short by Salamakas. Now he can stand up across, headed away by Ihan. Raspadori scored a match-winning brace at San Siro last season to topple Milan. We've barely seen him thus far tonight. Cleared away by Consigli. But there's no one there, and Sassuolo looking a bit out of sorts. Magnanelli, the club captain, did address it yesterday when he spoke to the media. He said, if we lose, it's because we're up against a team that are trying to win the title. Rafael Liao, once again, too quick. Rafael Liao's cross, this time I had was in the way. Teo Hernandez. Massimo, we mentioned Giroud with the goal, but Rafael Liao, two assists at the Bentegodi, another assist this evening. How good is he? I think he's fantastic, absolutely. He did a, a fantastic job, and I think he improved a lot in, in the last few months. So now he's a, a complete football player. Rafael Liao with another assist. This is Krunic. Krunic battling away with Fratesi. Milan still camped deep in Sassuolo territory. Maxime Lopez picks up the loose ball. 
Needs to be careful though. Was that a shove by Rafael Liao? Play continues. And Giroud got across the front of Ferrari again. Skamaka has lost his footing. Kalulu, Salamakas, and still Tonali! Fabulous save from Corsini. What a, what, what a match. It means that Milan wants this title very much. We see a great save by Consigli after a stunning finishing by, by Sandro Tonali from outside the box with his right foot. But, you know, Milan, this first 20 minutes or less, uh, it did very well, did very well. No chances for Sassuolo until now. Relentless pace from the Rossoneri, devastating tempo to proceedings tonight. It has been one-way traffic and they are determined to build a big lead here. They're not resting on their laurels. Teo Hernandez with the corner. Struck by Salamakas. Consigli had to intervene. This is Teo Hernandez now, and surely it must be. Somehow Sassuolo get it away. The whistle's gone, I think, for a foul on Consigli. Again, we say that uh, there is too much Milan inside, and, and, and you know, Sassuolo. He's not, he's not on the match, he's not on the match. One save, again, Teo Hernandez, again inside the box, another save by Consigli, and, and, and another foul, but you know, we, we saw that maybe more, more than 10 in, 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 the first, in the first 20 minutes, it's, it's, it's a lot. As I said, quality for Milan inside, because they have uh, players of quality, and on the other side, Sassuolo, they do not, he's not, he's not pay attention. Of course, he's, he's the last, that's the last match of the season, but they have to pay attention. You know, it's very important to finish well the season. Ferrari, it is just a one-goal lead. That's a good turn from Scamacca. Now it's Matteo Serriki. No foul by Salamakas. Krunic. Rafael Liao making the forward run. This time, Muldur did well. It has been a curious fixture list, this, for Milan in their running. There have been a number of landmark fixtures, reminders of the past. Atalanta last time out recalled their 5-0 loss in Bergamo, December 2019. It also recalled their 2-0 win on the same ground to qualify for the Champions League. They beat La Dea. Verona evoked memories of 1973 and 1990. La Fatal Verona, two editions of the Rossoneri spurning the title. And Sassuolo is all about when Milan decided to put their faith in Stefano Pioli and did away with the notion of bringing in Ralf Rangnick. Pioli stayed. And Milan have gone from strength to strength, and we should not be surprised by this scoreline. 15 matches unbeaten, 11 away games without defeat. It's just four losses in their last 45 matches away from San Siro in Serie A. An astonishing ability to travel and prevail. Now we have a cooling break and a chance for all of us to catch our breath, not just the players. How do we reflect on that, Massimo? The first 25 minutes, absolutely breathless. Of course, uh, as I said, amazing by Milan, but they want this result and uh, they want to win this match. And uh, they show on, on the pitch, as we said, it wasn't an easy match for them, but they show and uh, up to now that uh, they want to win and uh, they show it on the pitch. As I said, ten, ten, 10 opportunities for them and on the other side, uh, Sassuolo is too passive, but they can't do nothing. You will see again. Rafael Liao far too quick for Carnahan. Sassuolo, very unfortunate in the end because it wasn't the cleanest strike from Giroud, but it not only went through the legs of Ferrari, it also nutmegged the goalkeeper too. And sometimes 
that's just the rub of the green you need when you are looking to win the title, and Milan's rub of the green has come against the Nero Devni. Of course, but Giroud, you know, is not, not just a forward. He won the World Cup in France, he won a lot of leagues in, 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 uh, in England, so he knew what he had to do. He's very aggressive, he, he, he tried, he wants to, to win this title. He scored a goal, and it's very important for the other teammates. You know, to, to see that a, a player like that, like him, very uh, an old player, it means that an old player for, uh, with his career that is uh, is ready to fight to win this title. Giroud will turn 36 on the final day of September, but he has now become the oldest player in Serie A history to score 10 goals in his debut season. So he's older than Ronaldo was when he first managed that, and it's just a footnote. A statistical quirk to go along with what is one of the most significant goals in his career and as Massimo mentioned he's been there and done it World Cup winner Champions League winner he's won the Europa League too the Nations League and he might be able to add Serie A to his collection not many players in this Milan side have won silverware and Stefano Pioli the head coach hasn't either as his mother consistently reminds him about. Just to bring you up to speed, it is still goalless between Inter and Sampdoria, not the procession that perhaps many expected. Forward by Ihan. now it's Skamaka testing Kalulu. Skamaka, lovely footwork, and there was Tomori backing up Kalulu. They hunt in a pack. to see Mignon really tested by Sassuolo. They can, of course, change that in an instant. Berardi, Muldur. Berardi now causing problems for Kessier. Berardi felt he was fouled, the assistant agreed, and now Sassuolo have the chance to put the ball in the box. Yes, of course, a good free kick here um, by Sassuolo. And we have just two ways. It's, it's not easy, Milan is a physical team anyway. But uh, Sassuolo can have some chance uh, because Berardi is a good free kicker from that position. He can create problems in the box. Raspadori stood over it. Does suit the left footer, left by Berardi. In it comes from Raspadori, free header, and Ihan couldn't hit the target. He was there. It's Raspadori that with his right foot tried to find Ajan inside the box. He jumped and Giroud arrived, arrived just behind him, just to move him, do not give him the, the chance to, to have a, a clean head uh, of that situation. Carnahan trying to make up for his earlier slip. It was he who lost possession in the build-up to the opening goal. Rafael Liao scampering away with the ball and then teeing up Olivier Giroud. Tonali is giving it away to Matteo Serriqui, Raspadori, Maxime Lopez. Matteo Serriqui, Maxime Lopez. Berardi round the corner, here's Berardi again, he can let fly, but he didn't connect. Good chance here, so they build up from the back, and Berardi, that may be out of balance, just tried to shot on goal with his left foot. Not easy, because Milan did not give them time and space to shot on goal, and they did it just from outside the box. Stefano Pioli has clearly found 
a team that he trusts, a starting eleven that he can rely on and depend on. Rade Krunic has certainly been a new name in recent weeks, but he has more than justified the faith his coach has shown in him. Big performances at Verona and then against Atalanta at San Siro. Sandro Tonali, the lifeblood of this side. Kiriakopoulos nearly lost it to Calabria and had Rafael Liao been on his toes, he might have won it back, he's managed it anyway. Rafael Liao away from Ferrari, still Rafael Liao, and it's the same combination! Olivier Giroud does it again! And Milan now are marching towards the Scudetto. It was Liao to Tonali in Verona, it's Liao to Giroud in Reggio Emilia. And the Rossoneri cannot be stopped. Yeah, of course, they did very well in the, in the first 32 minutes of this match. And again, Leao unstoppable in, in this match. And Giroud that moves perfectly inside the box to receive this ball, this cutback. And we see again, try to build up from the back. Again, Leao one against two, impossible to stop him. Heads up, a good, perfect movement, a cutback from Leao with his left foot and Giroud shot on goal. Too easy, too easy again. Look, look at Giroud that moves away and when the ball arrives, he was ready to shot on goal. Giroud finding a pocket of space, Rafael Leao knew exactly where to find him. And when he's not scoring, he's turning provider. The league's outstanding player in recent weeks. And recent weeks have meant the title running when Milan have gone neck and neck with Inter. When it's all been on the line, Rafael Liao has found a new level. And he is surely a player they can build a team around. Berardi. He was fouled by Tonali. Sandro Tonali more for his reaction I think Massimo than the challenge itself throwing up his arm in frustration yeah, that's the point he have to be concentrate on the game maybe it wasn't a foul for him but it's not a clever reaction but by Sandro Tonali you know we have just other 30 minutes on, on, on the first half he doesn't have to be nervous he have just just to stay concentrated if the, the, the referee whistled that foul doesn't matter but Maybe he's in trance, uh, uh, you know, he's just thinking about too much the, the, the match. He's, he's, he, the flow is, is, is on the match, that's why. They came here expectantly, they came here in huge numbers and the droves are being rewarded. There hasn't been the hint of any nerves. Self-belief coursing through the veins of the Rossoneri, two goals to the good. And Sassuolo improbably need to score three. Can they grab one here? Raspadori with the free kick, headed clear by Giroud. Productive in both penalty areas. And Sassuolo need to be careful. Yes, they build out from the back, but this feels like a risky strategy given what's gone before. A couple of mistakes, and there's another one, Krunic. Winning back possession, here's Rafael Liao looking for Kessier! In his final match as a Milan player, Kessier provides the knockout blow. He's Barcelona bound, but he will go there with a title winning medal around his neck. It is all too easy for Milan and it is becoming a rout in Reggio Emilia. You just said it, too easy for them, too much mistakes by Sassuolo, especially when they want to build up from the back, and again Milan pressing very high, steal the ball, a break, and then uh, the ball arrived inside the box to KC, again Maxime Lopez, nobody was there, it's not a foul. And here Krunic that pressing very high, it's not a foul. Ball to Leao again, and then again, one man from behind.
cut, great cutback. But again, Leo, he's always in, in, in the perfect position. As I say, he's unstoppable at the moment. And this, this part of the season is really unstoppable. He's a game changer. Once again, teed up by Rafael Liao, a first half hat trick of assists for him. And Milan want more, they don't want to stop there. They want to humiliate Sassuolo. Maxime Lopez gets his 14th yellow card of the Serie A season. Of course, but when you do not approach the game with the, the right mentality, this is what can happen. You know, of course, as I said, the motivation is different. It means that Milan want to win the league. On the other side, Sassuolo, that of course have nothing to lose, but they are in a position that, uh, that they, 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 they can't win nothing. That, that's the point. But, of course, in sports, it's very important the approach that you have to, to, to the game. And if you, if you miss something, you will, you, you will play against a team that uh, have a lot of qualities, so they can create a lot to, to you, a lot of problems. The concern in recent weeks had been about whether Milan had enough to break down teams. There were the turgid dollars draws at home to Bologna, away at Torino, when, yes, they were keeping clean sheets, but they looked short on ideas. Light on inspiration, and yet now they seem to have found a new lease of life. Three goals in Verona, two against Atalanta, a further three here against Sassuolo. They're not only winning it, they're doing so in style. And Kessier with his first league goal since a brace at Empoli in December. Milan are currently matching their biggest winning margin of the season. At no stage have they won by more than three goals, something they might be keen to change. Calabria, Salamakas with the ball in, Giroud on a hat-trick. And the game, Giroud is on fire as, as Leo, you know, every ball that arrives inside the box, it's, uh, it's, it's for him, he can arrive to, to, to that ball. Again, a great header by Giroud that moves very well inside the box. No chances for, for Sassuolo defender up to now. Tomori holding off Skamaka. This is Salamakas. Tomori's continued his run. That would have been a story. Only ever scored once in Serie A for Milan. Well, they appeared relaxed before the game, Massimo. We saw Stefano Pioli having his coffee. Could barely pause to tell an anecdote here because it's Krunic. And now Rafael Liao. Can he get one? He very nearly did. Just try to shot on goal again, but we saw the break by Milan and a good movement by Liao that drive this ball inside and try from inside the box just behind the, the, the penalty spot to shot on goal with his right foot. He couldn't give enough power to that ball because maybe he, the ball was too close to the left foot. For once, Rafael Liao found himself with the ball caught under his feet. It is the only tiny blemish on what he's produced in 40 minutes of incredible action. Milan look like they're going to go 16 matches unbeaten to finish the season and win the title. Tonali. It is just wave after wave of pressure now. Tonali beaten to it by Ihan. And Alessio Dionisi has no answer for this at all. Nor does the Sassuolo senior management, Carlo Rossi, the president, Giovanni Cardinali. The CEO, do they look impressed? Clip forward by Mignon. Giroud backing in. It runs for Maxime Lopez. Ferrari. Fratesi.
Maxime Lopez, Ferrari, Sassuolo trying to finish the first half on the front foot, Fratesi chasing down the loose ball. Rafael Liao dived in and once again Sassuolo have a free kick on this near side. Sassuolo might just trigger a few nerves for Milan. They haven't shown any thus far. Not a whiff of stage fright. Left by Raspadori, and it comes from Berardi. And Mignon with a stunning save. Flicked on by Scamacca. Maxime Lopez away by Tomori. Here's Scamacca again. And that clattered into the head of Krunic, who will need some treatment. But Mignon underlying why he is the league's best goalkeeper. He will see again deflected by... Fratesi. Oh, Fratesi, yes. Fratesi just in front of Scamacca. A great save by, by Benyan. And here again, he tried to shot on goal and Krunic was there. But again, we see, we saw that the goalkeeper make the difference this season. And he did very well. Maybe a not a fantastic save but he was reactive in that situation. He read well that the possibility that the ball arrived in, the, in, the, in, the, in that, that position. He will see again. He, he's, he's, he's Maxime Lopez that tried to control that ball. It was alone, just alone. They leave him alone, you know, it's, it's not in that situation. The kind of things that you have to do. How about that finish from Kessier with his left foot as well? With a weaker foot, not not easy because the ball just bounced in front of him. And uh, but he was sure, he was confident. You know, when when you have when you have that that confidence, when you know that uh, you deserve, you want it, you want it, you 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 did that. And uh, we saw that. Cassie maybe you know he just moved to Barcelona. So in, inside yourself, you are self-confident for sure. Cassie is signing off in style. Despite the fact it's been an open secret that he will be leaving the club at the end of his contract. Pioli has kept faith in him, he is a senior player. And there is Sassuolo, senior player, Francesco Magnanelli, who we may well see in the second half. Sassuolo will resume with a corner. Fratesi's header really stretching Mignon, bringing the best out of the French goalkeeper. Berardi takes it short. And in it comes from Raspadori. Teo Hernandez didn't know too much about that. Cleared away by Teo Hernandez. Easy enough for Matteo Serriki. We're into the final minute of the first half. There will be a couple added on, at least for the cooling break. Clip forward by Consigli. One by Pierre Calulu. Matteo Serriki, Maxime Lopez, Fratesi, man who's gone closest to scoring for the Nero Verdi. Still looking for his first league goal in 2022. Three added minutes, says the fourth official. I had Muldur, Berardi, once again tracked very closely by Tomori. Berardi, he was clipped by Krunic. He's the man who's making things happen for the home side. <laughs> Half-time score for you, into nil, Sampdoria nil. Not that it matters too much with this scoreline. It would take an almighty turnaround from Sassuolo. Then again, Massimo, you were with me when we watched Napoli lead 2-0 here. They then drew two all. Gregoire de Frel had a goal disallowed, which would have been the winner. But then again, this is a Milan side that are chasing the title. Yes, of course. I, I think that this is a different story. I saw Milan that did not give any chance, any opportunity to, uh, to Sassuolo. So I think they are a lot. I don't know 
what, what can happen on the pitch, you know, but I think it's, at, at the moment, it's impossible that, uh, that, that something can change. It might need something significant, like a red card. Who knows if a man advantage could yet change things and swing the balance the other way, but it is an awfully long way back. Teo Hernandez there had a nibble on Fratesi. Daniele Doveri lets the advantage go. Ferrari. Kiriakopoulos. Maxime Lopez, Berardi, easy enough for Mignon. And you can understand why Fratesi is unhappy there. He's caught late by Teo Hernandez. Yes. You can see again. As I said, he's not so clever, you know. Players, you go in front 3 0. You don't, you don't need to do things like that. It is perhaps the only floor in Teo Hernandez's game, his disciplinary record. And there he came up against someone equally as quick, Fratesi, who's lost it to Krunic. Is there a fourth? Rafael Liao! And Salamak has snatched at a shot, but Sassuolo are in disarray defensively. Of course, they considered too much. As, as we said, uh, when, when, we, we, when we were talking about the match, as you said, you considered 64 go 63 goals during all the season. It means that uh, the opponent are 2-0 in front of you when you start the match. And what, what happened today? Too much. They gave too much opportunity to, to, to AC Milan and to, up to now to, to be in front. Milan have one hand on the championship trophy. Three first-half goals have them well on their way here at Mape Stadium. A brace from Giroud and Kessier added a third. They are relentless, they are irrepressible, and they are 45 minutes away from being crowd champions. Half-time score in Reggio Emilia, Sassuolo nil, Milan three. What is it? It is passion and style, heritage and diversity, creativity and innovation. Italy is simply extraordinary, be it.
the start of this second half. And so too are Sassuolo going to give a farewell to club captain Francesco Maglianelli, and they could do with his cool head, Massimo, 480th appearance for the club. The man who was promoted three times with uh, Sassuolo, played in Serie C2, Serie C1, Serie B and Serie A, so he's gone all the way up, and he knows more about what this club means than anyone else. His final match, he wears the armband and he comes on to replace Maxime Lopez, and surely he has to try and calm his teammates down because they've been all over the place, so Swallow. Up. Yes, of course, it's uh, the story of Magnanelli, but uh, he's uh, the history of this club. It's not so easy to remain in the same club, starting from the Serie C Liga Pro, I don't know how to say in English, the, the National League maybe, uh, and then uh, arrived to, to play with Sassuolo in Europe, because Sassuolo played also in Europe, and then finished, you know, against Milan in, in Sassuolo. So, of course, he have a lot of experience, and uh, that, that, that's what he have to do, try to transmit some of that experience, try, try to calm down, and try to, 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 to start again to, to be in the match, because Sassuolo, the first half didn't wasn't in the, weren't they weren't in the match and uh, they, they gave too much opportunity to a similar Salamakas turned down the ball through for Rafael Liao instead it's Kessier now it's Rafael Liao Giroud on a hat trick he wants the cross Rafael Liao for Kessier Kiriakopoulos calmly took a touch Skamaka new hairdo for him Hasn't coincided with a goal thus far. Skamaka and Timue Bakayoko with the same idea. Bleach Blonde for the final week of the season. Muldur, now Skamaka. Gets there ahead of Kalulu. Fratesi, Skamaka once more. And the list of coaches that Magnanelli played under, absolutely incredible. Maurizio Sarri, Max Allegri, Roberto De Zerbi. Stefano Pioli, Eusebio Di Francesco as well, who was the man who led Sassuolo into Europe in the first place. And what's been so impressive about this club is this is Magnanelli's ninth straight season in the Italian top flight. They didn't only get promoted, they've consolidated, they've stayed there. And they are a production line for talented players. They come and go, but they tend to have a ready-made replacement ready. The advantage had been and gone. This is Skamaka. Cut out well by Kalulu. Not sure if they've overwatered the pitch. We've seen several players slip so far this evening. Hasn't cost Milan, though. Far from it. Rafael Leal slipping it through for Teo Hernandez. Once again, Giroud with that near post run. Berardi, cleverly done, Skamaka holding off Tomori, but he couldn't find his friend and teammate, Fratesi. The gentleman with the goatee beard and the glasses, that's Paul Singer. Gordon there too, from the Elliott Fund. There is talk of Milan being sold now. Certainly have a very valuable asset on their hands, not only in terms of financial valuation, but also the human resources within it. Ferrari, Skamaka, given away to Kessier, but now Matteo Serriki, Raspadori there with him. This is Berardi. Still Berardi. Skamaka waits. Berardi goes himself. And once again, it's off target. And again, he's a shot from outside the box. Of course, he drives this ball inside. He first attempt, then he controlled the ball, drive the ball inside, and, and try to shot with his left foot on the on the far, on the far post. Not easy, really. He scored a brilliant bicycle kick at the Talara last weekend. Did uh, Mimo Berardi? Another excellent season, a campaign in which he reached 100 Serie A goals. He's got 
as many as 14 and 14 assists to go along with it. Headed clear by Ferrari. That's Kalulu. Shiru is offside. It's been a goal at the Meazza, it's gone the way of Inter. Ivan Perisic has given the Nerazzurri the lead. But they need an almighty change in fortunes here for Sassuolo for that to have any impact on the title race. Magnanelli. Fratesi's ball forward. Kiriakopoulos. Raspadori. The 7th of May 2011 was the last time they sealed the Scudetto. That was away from home as well. A match at the Stadio Olimpico against Roma. This time around, it's not Rome, but Reggio Emilia. The scene of the celebrations, but they will be continuing long into the night not just in the city of Milan either where they will congregate particularly beneath the shadow of the Madonnina in Piazza Duomo but also all around the world Ferrari Magnanelli given away to Kessier now Giroud Fratesi cuts it out Lots of the tempo has gone out of the game, understandable, given the scoreline. Scamacca giving chase. He's found a cutback. That's Badori beaten to it by Captain Calabria. Ihan, Magnanelli. So Swallow responding at the start of this second half. Matteo Serriki. Now it's Kiriakopoulos. He can pick his head up. And Berardi, for the second week running, tried the acrobatic. Was that the right option, Massimo? I don't know, it was the only thing that he can do, I think, but because he was out of balance. He arrived there very quick, maybe, maybe he will see again, but, you know, he just tried the only things that, the, the only thing that he can do in that, in that situation, just that. But Sassuolo starts to be just a little bit, it's, it's more dangerous than, than, than in the first half. Maybe because Milan take a breath, a long breath. They, they did a, a fantastic first half. Now they considered space and time to to to, to drive the ball, to pass the ball, and um, actually they are they are in control of the match. AC Milan. Benazir, Kalulu. Says lost it. This is Matteo Serriki. And then he lost his footing. Well, either they're wearing the wrong studs or the pitch has been overly watered. Salamakas, he was caught there. Kiriakopoulos, who's only just back from suspension, has his name taken this evening too. Question is now how long before we see Ibrahimovic, Krunic, Salamakis, Benasir.
Benesse, Krunic, Benesse once more. Now Fikayo Tomori. Back from Kessier, Tomori was knocked over by Skamaka, claiming a foul. Fratesi coming away from the traffic. Now it's Kiriakopoulos. Magnanelli. Stefan Pioli giving some tactical instructions there for Salimakas, telling him to tuck in and drop deep when Sassuolo have the ball. The last thing Milan will want to do is concede. Clean sheets have been a big part of why they've been so impenetrable recently. Only nine goals conceded in Serie A since the turn of the year. Astonishing sequence. Defensive solidity, the bedrock of what they do. Magnanelli's ball forward. Too high for Berardi. And if Milan lead 3 0, Inter are now two goals to the good. Joaquin Correa doubling the Nerazzurri's advantage. once again on the receiving end there. That's a swallow player chasing back. Calabria, Salamakas, well cut out by Kiriakopoulos. Matteo Serriki, Magnanelli. Spadori will give chase, but Calabria always likely to get there first. Salamakas, Kiriakopoulos has gone down, both players on the ground indeed. Nero Verdi free kick. The match is blocked now because Sassuolo can't create too much, and on the other side, Milan is completely in control of the match. Hazar into 3 0 up now against Sampdoria. Scorelines being mirrored a second for Correa. Inter getting the job done belatedly, but it is a muted occasion at the Meazza. Far cry from the jubilation and joy we are witnessing inside the Mape. Fratesi's season ends here with four goals, an excellent first campaign in the Italian top flight for Davide Fratesi, who knows whether we'll be seeing him with Sassuolo next season or in a bigger club. He's done his reputation no harm, Junior Traore on, who's also enjoyed a good campaign. Here is Traore, immediately causing problems for Calabria. And Traore took his eye off the ball as Calulu came across, Calabria. Magnanelli, Ferrari. Matteo Serriki, immediately closed down by Giroud. Here's Matteo Seke. Muldur. Kessier got a toe to the ball. Radek Krunic. Giroud didn't manage to keep it in play. The assistant making the decision there for Daniele Doveri. Magnanelli. Traore. Scamacca shows for it. Here he is. Lulu stay tied. Sassuolo to their credit, looking to force a way through, trying to get back in the match. Magnellini's given it away. Teo Hernandez, Rafael Liao. Teo Hernandez, space for him. It's his ball in. Giroud tried to lay it off to Rafael Liao. 
unselfish, given he was on a hat trick, it was very nearly a perfect pass. Yes, it was a perfect pass by uh, Teo Hernandez inside the box. Fantastic movement by Giroud attacking the, the, the near post, and then he tried to flick that ball to Leao. Maybe the timing wasn't right, that, that's the point, but a great chance for Milan, a great piece of play. A reminder that Rossoneri still carry a thread, so Swallow trying to plot their way forward. Kiriakopoulos, here's Traore, trying to commit Kalulu, who once again came away with the ball. Milan's most underrated player, perhaps Pierre Kalulu. His emergence, such a big part of how this Scudetto has been won. They're not there yet, it must be said. Salamakas. Once again, Teo Hernandez on the ball. Here's Rafael Liao, who will be determined to play 90 minutes, you sense. Benacer. Rafael Liao given away to Magnanelli and now Sassuolo can break. Berardi, Scamacca. Berardi continues his run. Tomori was there, as was Teo Hernandez. Rafael Liel very nearly latched onto that. It needed a good challenge from Matt Muldur. One of the most impressive things about this partnership between Fikayo Tomori and Pierre Kalulu has been their ability to dodge yellow cards. That was the touch, and Giroud very nearly found the feet of Rafael Liel. Kalulu and Tomori both picked up their fourth caution at Lazio, but since then, unscathed against Fiorentina. No yellow card against Verona or Atalanta. They haven't been overly troubled this evening either. Forward by Mignon. Teo Hernandez. Here's Giroud. Still Olivier Giroud. The angle's tied, which is why he looked for a teammate. Away by Kiriakopoulos. Magnanelli. Traore. Kiriakopoulos. Gets it back from Magnanelli. Not sure he wanted it there. Junior Traore. Finally, Sassuolo can clear. Straight to a white shirt. Calabria. And still. This is Rafael Liao trying to return the favour to Calabria. Four assists would have been almost unprecedented. Rafael Liao. Giroud. Again, Mina, that is control of the match. Not give the chance, the opportunity to Sassuolo to, uh, to have a counter attack. And he will see the shot from outside with his left foot by Giroud. Nobody was inside the box there, so he just tried to finish that, finish that, 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 that situation to, and shot on goal. No better option for Giroud, not that you could hold it against him trying to grab a third in any case. Should really be shooting on sight given the match situation. Over hit by Magnanelli. story of this season there will be some notable moments Inter will feel some regrets particularly when they were four points clear of Milan going into the derby they led that game through Perisic we were heading seven clear with a game in hand but Giroud grabbed a brace turned the title race on its head now he's looking for his hat-trick Giroud wins a corner off Ferrari again a lot of space 
and Giroud tried to attack the space, use the width of the pitch, and receive this ball from Salimakis. And but inside the box, there were just Leao and uh, four players of, of uh, Sassuolo that maybe just thinking about they, they they're thinking about the result of the match, and they don't want to concede more goals to to, to Milan. Pride is kicked in for Sassuolo. The result is almost beyond down. They won't want to be on the end of a hiding. Salamakas with the corner. Consigli there to gather, but the ball had gone out of play before coming back in. We mentioned the derby. It wasn't only that moment. There was Inter's now infamous game in hand at the Talara against Bologna, where they led early on through Perisic. But Nera saw the old boy Marco Arnautovic equalised and then Andre Radu, standing goalkeeper with Andanovic injured, made a big mistake. Even then, the way things have gone, a draw for Inter would not have been enough in that match anyway. So it would be reductive and unfair to pin this all on Radu. Inter have had opportunities, they haven't taken them. Milan have not blinked. They're on course for six straight wins to close out the season. 16 unbeaten since that shock home defeat to Spezia. Berardi from distance. And it's all becoming slightly desperate now for Sassuolo. They're having to resort to long-range shots, and Berardi might have some cramp after a long season. So maybe the, the players on the pitch are tired. You know, it's very hot, as we said, uh, in, in the north of Italy especially. It's very hot and humid. He's not an injury. The Nations League is coming up at the start of June. That will involve Italy. As Massimo said, it is absolutely sweltering. 33 degrees here inside Mape Stadium. And we are set for our second cooling break of the evening, provided Daniele Doveri decides to opt for that approach again. Really unusual for this period. Unseasonably warm weather it does hit the 30s. Don't worry about that in Italy, but normally at least waits until we reach June. July and August are unbearable, particularly in this part of the world. Then again, the fog is not particularly nice in November and December. Gerardi ends his season. Without a goal or an assist today, but he certainly had plenty of those as the campaign wore on. Once again, proving that he is Sassuolo's outstanding talent. And Grégoire de Frel completes the set. He has featured in every single match for the Nero Verdi this season. Long by Mignon, Raphael Liao with the flick on. Giroud couldn't quite bring it under control, but they're bouncing. Inside Mape Stadium, it is a short trip back to Milan, under an hour on the fast train. Shade over that on the roads, but they will be partying tonight in the city of Milan. The celebrations will already erupt here in Emilia-Romagna. Ferrari, time and space for De Frail. Scamacca there with him, here he is now. Raspadori. And that sums up Sassuolo's performance. As I said, easy. we said before, it's not so easy for Sassuolo. You know, stay in the match. Now we see Ibrahimovic, and I think there will be a lot of players that will, uh, uh, will have a substitution. For sure, is is uh, something that uh, Pioli have to give to, to, to his player, to, to this group that worked in the last two to three years to arrive here today and play to win the league. Zlatan Ibrahimovic stripped and ready to go with him, Brahim Diaz. Ibrahimovic has already won four Scudetti. Teo Hernandez now. Giroud was waiting, wanted the early cross. Rafael Liao, Salamakas. My hand stretched out a leg. 
Benasir, Tomori. Kessier. It's now keep ball for the Rossoneri. Next 20 minutes will be agony for Sassuolo, who will be just desperate to hear the final whistle. The same will go for Inter players and supporters in their forlorn cause at the Meazza, but Milan are going to savour every single second of this at Sassuolo. De Frel crowded out, and now it is time for Zlatan Ibrahimovic. His role this season has been more symbolic as the campaign has worn on. That should not diminish the fact that he has still scored eight goals in all competitions. Before he is introduced, we are going to have that second cooling break. Yes, of course. This is the second cooling break, and uh, Raheem Diaz too. Side of pitch, so Ibrahimovic, Raheem Diaz. As I said, I think that Pioli won't want to give the opportunity to all the players to participate in this match because they did very well in the last two, th two to three years and uh, they, they improve and um, they create a group not just a group of players not just a group of players but a team you know, a team that's the point and uh, they, they, they won and they are winning because of that Milan with a great team great squad Great team behind the team and wonderful supporters too. Stefano Pioli embraces Olivier Giroud once again, grabbing the headlines with his brace today. And now it looks like his evening is up. Support staff trying to get his attention. It looks like he will be coming off for Ibrahimovic. Remains to be seen who will be withdrawn for Brahim Diaz. Presumably, Rade Krunic, albeit could be someone else. What a debut season it has been for Olivier Giroud, hero of the second derby, match winner again tonight. A man whose name will always be synonymous with this Scudetto, the 2021-22 triumph for the Rossoneri, he makes way for his equally illustrious colleague Zlatan Ibrahimovic. And indeed it is Radek Krunic making way for Brahim Diaz. But Ibrahimovic, master of all he surveys. Yes, we, we can say that Ibrahimovic started the project just two years ago when he arrived and uh, Giroud completed the opera at, at the end because he did very well since he arrived and uh, he did a fantastic job and uh, he's a great player anyway you know you, you mentioned it what all the things all the awarded what, what, what he had and uh, it is not uh, something that um, you know that, that can happen by chance by chance yes Indeed, Olivier Giroud, very decorated, but the only previous league title before this one with Montpellier in Ligue 1. They were a surprise package to shock Carlo Ancelotti's Paris Saint-Germain way back when. It's not ju just a coincidence, you know. <laughs> that's, that's the point. And as you said, Ibrahimovic started the project Milan were chastened by that 5-0 loss at the end of December 2019. It sent shockwaves throughout the club. Stefano Pioli felt he had to act. He went to the ownership, went to the sporting director and the technical director, Ricky Massara and Paolo Maldini, and asked for some more experience. They brought in Ibrahimovic and Simon Kier. And the rest is history. Salamakas, half a yard to deliver. Consigli claiming the ball went beyond the byline. Agnanelli has it. Traore, Scamacca. Traore again. 
Now Muldur can carry it forward. Raspadori. Matteo Serriki. Raspadori in a pocket of space. Traore. Kiriakopoulos there with him. This is Scamacca. Once again, well read by Tomori. He's barely put a foot wrong. Raheem Diaz got up early. Ibrahimovic came back from an offside position. <laughs> Defrel. Muldur. Defrel away from Benasser. It is a corner to Sassuolo. Still showing signs of life. I think that he had the chance here, this situation, to cross this ball inside the box with his right foot. I know he's the weaker foot, but he can do it. Rafael Yao made sure Raspadori couldn't deliver. Rigwan Defrel just lost that split second time edge. He did have teammates waiting in the penalty area too. Raspadori takes the corner. Good shout from Menor. That's why Ibrahimovic ducked under it. But again, we've seen that several times tonight. The ball went out before it came back in. We saw them in the Atalanta game. More Mexican waves from the Milan masses. This is an occasion that will live long in the memory. I was there, 18,000 in Reggio Emilia. You can be sure that in years to come, they'll be claiming that they were there, about 50,000 people or so. But the ones inside the ground have the ticket stubs to prove it. Matteo Serriqui. Skamaka gives chase. Kaluru guides it back towards Menyon. Benna says, come on, Brahim Diaz and Ibrahimovic. There's Nelson Dida. He's behind the, the, the goal of uh, Menyon. Rafael Liao, Ibrahimovic in the middle, surely! The perfect way to seal the Scudetto. The main man makes his mark as well. And Mape Stadium is brought to its knees by Slatan Ibrahimovic. The only question is, was Rafael Liao offside? I don't know if Rafael Leao is onside or not. He was on, on the edge of, uh, of offside. You know, a great goal by Ibrahim, which they are waiting. But a great header by him. And again, a cross by Leao. We have just to wait and say, but I, I think that's the VAR said it was offside, yes. Confirmation that Rafael Leao marginally offside. Ibrahimovic unable to celebrate, adding a fourth, unable to get his name on the score sheet in a title-winning side, which he's done plenty of times before. Three times a Scudetto winner with Inter, also a champion with Milan. The last time they won the title, and that was very tight indeed, Massimo. Yeah, just, just, just a few, a few centimetres. You know. But again, uh, Sassuolo tried to take a big risk because they play with the, with the line very high, too much space behind him, and too much time and space for the man with the ball to play that, that, that you know, to play the ball over the line. That, that's the point. He has two more changes up his sleeve, so he's turning to Roman Pair, Alessandro Florenzi, and Alessio Romagnoli, who is still the club captain. He's out of contract and expected to go back to the capital and play for hometown 
team. Club he supported as a boy, Lazio. Calabria supported Milan as a boy. And he is the captain in waiting, but we've already been given a glimpse as to what that looks like in the last couple of months. Romagnoli can't get in the side. Such are the performances of Tomori and Kalulu. Magnanelli, Matteo Serricchi. Muldur. Easy enough for Teo Hernandez, at least it should have been. Tomori helps him out. Kessier. Shoved to the ground by Matteo Serricchi. So we'll see Florenzi in that slightly more advanced role. He has frequently deputised a fullback for Calabria this season, but he can also play further forward as we saw in the start of his career. And Alessio Romagnoli will salute the Milan supporters for one last time. And he'll do so from the pitch as well. He has not played since Inter in the cup. Stefano Pioli leading the applause for an Englishman who will very soon be celebrating winning the Scudetto and it is richly deserved for Fikayo Tomori. Plenty of speculation as to whether he should represent his country. Gareth Southgate has ignored him but his performances are becoming more difficult to ignore with every passing week. And much like Magnanelli it is Final call for Federico Peluso, himself a title winner in the past. 2013 and 2014, he won the Scudetto with Juventus. And Andrea Consigli also makes way. And we're going to see Giacomo Satarino as well. This is something we've been witnessing a lot over the last weekend. Massimo. Understudy goalkeepers being given an opportunity, but all of the focus, quite rightly, on Stefano Pioli and this brilliant job he's done at the Milan Hill. Yes, of course, he's very important. So, Stefano was a goalkeeper in 1999, so he had the chance to play, make experience. It's not, it's not easy, it's not an easy game, of course, but we are the end of the season. So, it's very important to, to have the opportunity to go on. Beach and, and play, just play. Also in a match like this. On the other side, we saw that uh, Pioli, as I say to you, has just tried to change uh, all the players and gave them the opportunity to be in the match. Because as a player, you have to feel the, the, the pitch, you have to feel the sensation to be part of, of a project, as we said, that started two years ago or three years ago. And now Pioli joining in because that's the chance, specially dedicated for him. Pioli's on fire. And his team have really caught light in recent weeks. And there have been several sparks. It's not just Raphael Yao, we've seen Sandro Tonali also light things up. And so too Olivier Giroud providing the fuel. Frel forward by Ihan, Raspadori, well in by Romagnoli, Kessier. Calabria stepping away from Junior Traore. Ibrahimovic now, no look pass. Calabria is away from Magnanelli, Ibrahimovic. Milan once again toying with Sassuolo. Romagnoli, Brahim Diaz, 
Can he sign off with a goal? He's not scored since September. Made a really fast start to the season. has gone quiet in the final third. Brahim Diaz now. Fair challenge from Peluso, a robust one. Matteo Serriqui. Dufrel. Muldur getting forward. He looks for Scamacca. Straight down the throat of Mike Mignon. They'll have to wait a little while longer. Pioli's already soaked through. But this crowd has been celebrating ever since they took a 1 0 lead. Second goal was an insurance policy. The third made it cast iron. And now it is cries of tutto lo stadio, the whole ground, and they've dominated that in terms of their presence tonight. Muldur. It's his shot, and you had to push it away. Still there for Traore. Lovely skill from Junior Traore. Kalulu with the block. And I say, very calm. And you knocks it long. But surely Massimo at this stage, given the scoreline, given what's at stake, Daniele Doveri will blow for full time on 90 minutes. Dufrel, Traore! It's off the post. And Sassuolo, a coat of paint away from grabbing a goal and spoiling Milan's clean sheet. I don't know if, uh, he will keep, of course, he will give some added time because they have the cooling break just for that. And after that, I don't know if, uh, you know, on, on this situation, he will give more time. Rafael Liao, well found by Ibrahimovic, and he lost his footing just as Brahim Diaz and Ibra waited. Big chance because they were three. They were three against one. Raspadori, Traore, just struck the post. Still Traore, one back by Florenzi. Traore, dropping the shoulder. This is Raspadori. Now Calabria comes away with the ball. Milan a bit too frenetic and frantic at times in getting it forward. They will all be desperate to see Ibrahimovic score. Came so close with that disallowed goal. Matteo Serriqui. Muldur. Matteo Hernandez doing some diligent defending. Matteo Serriqui, Traore beaten to it by Florenzi. What is it about this pitch? Players keep slipping. Kiriakopoulos, he saw Mignon off his line. Interestingly, Kiriakopoulos has only ever scored once in Serie A. It came on the final day of last season. And there, for once, Mignon was beaten. But the frame of the goal to his rescue. It's a very good shot from outside the box by Traore. Mignon was there anyway said the good goalkeeper is ready to save when it's necessary and he did it twice this, this, during this match but he did a lot of time during the season Stefano Pioli does have his wife in the crowd his daughter is here as well with his grandchildren that's possibly who he was turning his attention to there he will finally get his hands on some silverware. And it is the biggest prize in Italian football. Kessier. Brahim Diaz. Kessier again. Now it's Calabria breaking forward. Calabria's cross. Too high for Ibrahimovic. Still there for Rafael Liao. There's the trickery. And Calabria kept out by Consigli. That would have been a popular goal scorer. 
the Milan Academy product, the man wearing the armband, kept out by Consiglian, but for him, it could almost have been double figures tonight for Milan, they've been that good. But again, what a play by, by Leao inside the box, fantastic, one against one, heads up, fun. Calabria just in the middle of the target and a great, fantastic save by conceding that situation. Really. The 90 minutes are all but up, as Massimo correctly reminded us. We did have a cooling break, so at least a couple of minutes, you would think, would be awarded for that. Beyond that, we're right down to the end of this season campaign, which will end with Milan as champions. Magnanelli. Couldn't be crunching that. And now Dida, who's won silverware with Milan as a player, will do so as part of the goalkeeping coaching staff. And this has several implications for Milan. Two minutes, indeed, the added time. They'll not only be champions for the 19th time, they will draw level with Inter in terms of the number of titles they've won. They will be seeded for the Champions League next season. They will take part in the Super Cup. We have that prospect of the Milan derby between the title winners and the Coppa Italia holders Inter. This rivalry looks set to run between the two Milanese giants. But all that can wait. The priority at this moment in time is celebrating ending 11 years without a league title, ending five and a half years without any trophy at all. The 2016 Super Cup, which came in late December in Doha, that was the last time Milan won anything. But clearly, there is a big difference between the Super Cup and the Scudetto. Matteo Serriki, Scamacchia. Kiriakopoulos. Scamacchia from a long way out. And then you watched it wide. Now everyone wants to know from Daniele Doveri how long remains, presumably, as and when Mignon clears this ball finally there will be an outpouring of joy relief and delight from all those connected with Milan six straight wins champions for the 19th time they've done it in style in Reggio Emilia the Rossoneri rule Italy once again Stefano Pioli the brains behind the operation. A young group of players that seemingly knows no limits. A couple of old heads in there too. Olivier Giroud came to the fore at Mappe with a brace. Raphael Liao underlined his status as the most devastating player in Serie A. But they have the best defence in the league. They have the most points, of course. They only needed a draw today. They've gone one better than that. 3-0 victors against Sassuolo. All three goals in the first half. And those that made the trip to Reggio Emilia have certainly been rewarded. Massimo Paganin, your thoughts on Milan, the champions for the 2021-22 season. As I said, they, they, did, uh, they started the project a few years ago and uh, now they arrived to, 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 win, to win the league. Uh, they did very well during this season. They remained close to, to Inter and they deserve to win at the end because uh, they, they, they remain there until the end. You know, when you, when you believe in something, you remain there and uh, they used the opportunity that uh, uh, during the season arrived to them to, to win the league. It's very important, but they did very well. Pioli did very well, uh, the team, and so they deserve to, to be here today and win this, this title. He could have got a head start on engraving that, the name of AC Milan, into the trophy there. The result was done and dusted by the interval. Three first-half goals. 
would have meant an improbable four goal swing the way of Sassuolo, which never materialised. Inter's victory over Sampdoria in vain. But as and when Milan sees the summit, they never relinquish control. They won all the way out. And now they will proudly celebrate not only a 19th league title, but they'll also delight in the fact they have taken it off their cross city rivals. Inter have been dethroned. And Inter, who spent so much of this season wandering about a 20th Scudetto, a second star on their shirt, have now been caught up by the Rossoneri. And Serie A is as competitive as ever. Yes, we had nine straight league titles for Juventus, but the last three winners read Juventus, Inter, Milan, the big three. And as an aside, the last four winners of the Coppa Italia read Lazio, Napoli, Juventus and Inter. And they also do right to 19 as, as Inter, as Inter last season. And now it is the race for that second star. Milan on 19 league titles and this one will taste particularly sweet for all those years in the doldrums for several seasons when they simply felt like the end wasn't in sight there was no light at the end of the tunnel underwhelming playing staff disappointing results on the pitch and yet this has been carefully planned this has been meticulously put together by Maldini and Massara they have been guided home by Stefano Pioli and of course Massimo you need the raw material and in Rafael Liao particularly they have a world-class performer yes of course you need uh, qualities player that, that's the point and i think that leao Hernandez too tomori and kalulu that, that that you mentioned it or kia uh, you know they, they they improved during the season during the, the last few years and uh, they did very well calabria too because calabria did, did very well in, in, in the middle we saw sandro tonali that did uh, that did not so so well last season and during this season improved and, and did very very well and uh, in the last few matches he scored a lot of goals a lot few goals that uh, uh, gave the, the opportunity to, to to milan to to arrive at, at this point you know and th that's very important uh, you need uh, players you need men because you need uh, someone that grow up also as a man and uh, improve as a man and i think that pioli and uh, also the the management with uh, you mentioned it, Maldini, Massara, Gazidis, uh, uh, they did very well. So as a team, as a team, they did uh, what they did and they arrived today to, uh, to win the, the league. This is very important. Sensational scenes on the home ground of Sassuolo, populated by Milan supporters this evening. They have got what they came for. They witnessed the spectacle. They came here to see Milan keeping Inter at bay, holding off the Nerazzurri and absolutely pummeling Sassuolo in the process. 18 efforts on goal, a dozen of them on target. The bulk of those came in the opening 45 minutes when they played like a team possessed in pursuit of the all-important point they needed to win the title. In the end, they got three and it takes their tally to 86 which incidentally is three more than Juventus won the Scudetto with in 2019-2020 under Maurizio Sarri. It's five shy of the total that Antonio Conte's Inter claimed last season, but you only have to beat what's put in front of you. And Napoli were valiant contenders for much of the season. Inter were made of even sterner stuff, and there was the psychological edge that Milan had to overcome. Inter as reigning champions but they showed such cool heads the ability to win what was on paper a very difficult run in we spoke about it time and again Lazio away Fiorentina home Verona away Atalanta home and then Sassuolo on their travels yes of course they did, uh, as I said to you uh, the confidence grow up uh, they, did, they did well also when they were down 
you know, in, uh, in, in the, um, the results. Because against Verona, they were one nil down. Against Lazio, they were one nil down, but they won. You know, when you, you have to be strong, you have to, uh, to, to you need to have a, a strong mentality and um, a good approach to the, to the match. Calm down. But I think that uh, is, is that what Pioli do in, in, in the last in the last few season. You know, in the last few season, create the mentality, and uh, during this season, they never give up, and so they arrive at the end. Uh, and uh, had the possibility to, to, to play this match because uh, if you want something you need to arrive at the end and, and uh, uh, with this opportunity they create for, on their own it means that they did very well and this has not been a flash in the pan this has not been a fluke this has not been an overnight success story Massimo mentioned it there Stefano Pioli guided Milan to a dozen matches unbeaten post lockdown in that season disrupted by Covid-19, the 2019-20 campaign. They then took 49 points from a possible 57 last season away from home. This time around, they've only lost one game on their travels all season in Florence. Just four league losses all season long. And we will allow you to savour some of this footage as we shortly return for the trophy celebration. And now the public address announcer is inviting fans to clear the field of play so that Milan can be awarded with the Scudetto trophy. I'll take this opportunity to thank the man alongside me for his wonderful work this season. Massimo, your final thoughts on this season? Of course, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, it was a privilege for me to, to, to be here and had the opportunity to uh, to see a, a season like this. It was a uh, really a uh, uh, few years that uh, we didn't have uh, a season like this. So, as I say, it's a great privilege to have the opportunity to comment what happened with football because I love football. So thank you very much to you and thank you very much to everybody that listened to us and uh, a goodbye to next season. So thank you very much and uh, I hope you, you will enjoy what was what you left. Final thoughts there of Massimo Pagani, former Inter defender on what's been a real triumph for Milan this season. And now, Mappe Stadium and the pitch here in Reggio Emilia has become a place for the fans to congregate. Some are sunbathing, some will be taking home mementos, blades of grass perhaps, smelling the turf and savouring every single second of this. But before that, we've got the highlights. Milan came to Reggio Emilia needing only a point against Sassuolo. 
to seal a first league title in 11 years, their 19th all told against a dangerous net of every team that had beaten them in the reverse fixture. Milan made a great start to proceedings. Rafael Liao scampering away from Ihan, and then he teed up Giroud. And Olivier Giroud with another big goal in the title race, taking him into double figures. And on 17 minutes, Milan had that all important breakthrough. Then it would be the same combination once again. Rafael Liao wreaking havoc. This time, he cut it back for Giroud. And that was a more forceful finish, a more convincing strike, and the same result too. 32 minutes on the clock, Milan two goals to the good, and running riot in Reggio Emilia. The Rossoneri would then grab a third. Once again, Rafael Liao completing his hat trick of assists, and Franck Kessier finishing his time with the Rossoneri with a goal. Barcelona bound, but a goal scoring departure for the Ivorian. 3-0 at the break, there would still be time for chances to come in the second half. Sassuolo in particular. Gregoire de Frel found Traore and his shot hit the foot of the post with Mignon beaten for once. Milan's clean sheet just about intact, thanks to the frame of the goal. Then Rafael Liao with more trickery, Calabria really should have scored. Consigli got across very smartly indeed to keep the scoreline at 3-0. But in the end, it was Milan who celebrated a 3-0 win and their 19th league title. Yes, Patrick, I'm, I'm still here because I say that's a privilege, of course, and all the things, but I have to say congratulations to Milan. I didn't, direct, didn't say it directly. It was obvious for me, but of course, congratulations to, to the winner. And uh, Milan deserved this. Uh, and uh, at the end, uh, we will see. We are waiting uh, all of you on the next season. Thank you very much. Milan's motivation was particularly significant this evening. They knew the title race was in their hands, and similarly, the supporters heavily motivated to vacate the pitch so that Ci now quasi, they can delight in the trophy ceremony. Last year, they were only runners up. They had to watch on as Inter lifted the title with several weeks to spare. This time around, they left it late. They waited until the final weekend of the campaign. But it is Milan who can once again say they are the best side in Italy. chance begin siamo noi siamo noi campioni d'italia siamo noi we are we are the italian champions milan now have that claim they can shout it from the rooftops and piazza duomo tonight will be decked out in red and black Another famous day in this club's illustrious history. Once again, Milan have 
beaten all comers in Serie A. And it will taste particularly sweet because they've edged out their cross city rivals. Both Inter and Milan had to watch on at their lowest ebb, arguably, as Juventus swept to nine straight league titles. But there you see Piolismo, that's what they're branding this style of football. But now the Juventus dominance is at an end, and they have Inter to thank for that. It was all up for grabs this season. What a campaign for Milan, unbeaten through the first 12 matches of the season. Then came the wobble, losses against Fiorentina and, and against Sassuolo. It was also a defeat at home to Napoli in December, but since the turn of the year, just that one freak defeat to Spezia. When in truth, Junior Messias had a goal unfairly disallowed, the referee quickly blowing. And then they were undone by an Emmanuel Jassy goal in added time. Since then, they haven't lost a single match. 16 games unbeaten, half a dozen wins to take the crown in style. It is more than befitting of the champions. This points tally of 86, and they will take some toppling next season. They might not have been favourites at the start of the season back in August. They may well be in a couple of months from now, because this side has everything. Team spirit, youthful exuberance, unpredictability, flair, and solidity too. And a huge backing. What a turnout it's been in Reggio Emilia. There is the club president, Paolo Scaroni. He will certainly be part of the presentation party. Club employees, senior management, players, staff, families, they're all here to see it. They're all here to delight. In this occasion, it's quite the feat from Milan. Perhaps not the vintage crop that dominated domestically and in Europe. Not the superstars that were brought to the club under Silvio Berlusconi. This is a new model where they preach financial prudence. It's all about valuable assets. They certainly have plenty of those young players with high potential that can develop together. And this is the start of a very exciting era in the club's history. The beginning of a new winning cycle, perhaps. Paul Singer, the man whose finances made it all possible, but they have taken a back seat. It's the first time he's attended a Milan game. The man who's in charge of Elliot, the group that brought up Milan. And they have left it in the very capable hands of Ricky Massara, Paolo Maldini, Ivan Gazidis, the CEO, and of course, Stefano Pioli.
Everyone was convinced they would trip up, they would slip, that something would go awry, that one of those banana skins would be too much to take. But it all really hinged not only on Inter's defeat in Bologna in that game in hand, but also when Sandro Tonali scored that late winner at Lazio. That's when it felt the momentum shifted, and that was indeed three days prior to Inter's defeat at Bologna. That gave Milan the edge, that showed Inter that they would not lie down, that they had the stuff of champions. And whilst it was just a feeling at that stage, merely a sensation, we now have tangible proof of exactly that. Milan not only have the stuff of champions, they now boast the silverware to go along with it. If it felt like a long week building up to this game, this will feel particularly long as well. They are still waiting for the players and staff to re-emerge from the dressing room. They are having to bide their time before Milan emerge to finally get their hands on the coveted prize. Structure has been set up. The platform is there. We're just waiting for the protagonist. The stage is set. First league title came way back in 1901. This is now their 19th. They're a long way off Juventus, but they move level with Inter again, and they don't suffer the ignominy of watching the Nerazzurri go too clear and claim a second star in the process. A lesson in how to be ruthless. Paolo Maldini, so triumphant in his playing days, but now he can celebrate a piece of silverware in a new role as technical director. He had the foresight to see the potential in Stefano Pioli. He had the wherewithal to change his mind about Ralph Rangnick. And between him and Ricky Masada, they've had the eye for talent to bring in the right personnel, to strike the right balance between youth and experience. Serial winners and bright young things. He is very much the public face of this club. He is a legend already, but now his status is further enhanced. Paolo Maldini is Milan, his whole family is, his father cheers today, his son Daniel on the playing staff. And even Daniel Maldini got his name on the score sheet too this season. Scored at Spezia, lest we forget. And Paolo might well be letting his hair down tonight. There will be some weary heads tomorrow, an open top bus tour is planned throughout the city. Milan City Council has planned a blanket ban on the sale of alcohol from 2 p.m. until the early hours of Tuesday morning. But this really is 
Rossoneri Renaissance. The first step was getting back into the Champions League. They did so via that runner-up finish. They did so by winning on the final day of last season in Bergamo. This time around, they've got one better. Italian champions. And they are becoming a model as well, examples of best practice in other parts of the world. There are rumours that Manchester United are now looking at the way Milan are being run. Their recruitment has been targeted. It has been successful, but it's all about what they produce on the pitch. The proof is in the pudding, and this will taste particularly sweet. Signore e signori. Ha ora inizio la cerimonia di premiazione della Serie A Team 2021-2022. And so begins the trophy celebration. Diamo il benvenuto all'amministratore delegato di Lega Serie A, Luigi De Siervo, e al presidente di team, Salvatore Rossi, che effettueranno le premiazioni. Luigi De Siervo, the CEO of Lega Serie A. Salvatore Rossi, who is the man who represents team, sponsors of the competition. They will be the men tasked with handing over the trophy. First down, Ciprian Tataruciano. He played his part in this title race. They needed him for nine matches when Mignon had wrist surgery. He came up with some big saves. There were a couple of hairy moments. But he was the man who kept Mignon on his toes in training. He was also the goalkeeper that stepped in when required. And now it's time for Davide Calabria. Brescia born, but a Milan fan throughout his childhood. And what a proud moment for him. It takes a special career to even emerge as a first team player from the Rossoneri Academy. He's not just done that, he is now the man leading them towards this triumph. Ismail Benasser, where would Milan be without his wonderful volleyed finish in Sardinia to see off Cagliari during that tense period when it seemed they would only manage to score every which way and it became like pulling teeth. There was no verb in the final third. It was all a bit turgid and tense. But Benasser's big goal there, just one of several contributions from the Algerian this season. Two trophies this year for Fode Palotore. He became African champion with Senegal. And now he's Italian champion. His first season with Milan. A bit part player, yes. But still a dozen appearances for him. Six from the start. Back up to Teo Hernandez. But they all contribute on the training ground. They're all part of this wonderful team spirit, which has really characterized this championship run from Milan. Now it's time for Samuel Castillejo, who may well be on the way out. A move to Valencia fell through in January. He'll be delighted he stayed around. And the fans appreciate him because of his attachment to the cause after that derby win. Over Inter, it was an Eratori home match, and he very quickly went and turned the lights. So they showed red and black rather than blue and black.
Sandro Tonali with a couple of decisive blows down the stretch. The winner in Rome over Lazio, a brace on his birthday at the Bentegodi. The man who took the pay cut to stay with Milan, the club he supported as a boy. And he has now emulated the exploits of his idol, Bruno Gattuso. He too is a Scudetto winner. Giroud all set to pop the bubbly. The French certainly know what they're talking about when it comes to sparkling wine. And he is aging like a fine wine. First season in Italy ends with the title. And nor was he simply watching on. It's a starring role for Olivier Giroud. Two goals today. And above all, the first two goals on an occasion which would have been nervous, regardless of how Milan approached it. You don't score as many goals as he has for his country unless you're talented. Brahim Diaz with that infectious smile. Began the season in fine style from a goal-scoring perspective, but that's not what his game is necessarily all about. He injects pace, he provides unpredictability. He certainly showed some of that off the bench in crucial matches as the season wore down. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, not only with the bubbly, he's got a cigar as well. And now, the showman really gets the party started. This is his stage, this is where he belongs. And unsurprisingly, all eyes on Ibra. His goal off the bench, denied by the offside flag. That was close, but no cigar. But he's got his hands on one now. And he's also got his hands on a fifth league title. His second with Milan after a trio with Inter. Ante Rebic. Injuries have held him back, much like Ibrahimovic. But still a senior player. Still an important part of this Rossoneri revival. An important equaliser at Juventus early on in the campaign. All of those goals worth points and every point crucial when it came to knocking Inter off their perch. The goalkeeper of the year, another clean sheet today. Milan have had 18 shutouts in Serie A this season. Mike Mignon. MVP of the season in goal. What a signing he's proven to be. Champion with Lille last season in France. Champion with Milan this time around. He's been so good that they've forgotten the name of his predecessor. Who needs Ciccio Donnarumma when you've got Mike Mignon? Arguably at the best of the lot. He has reached new heights in recent weeks. He has found a level perhaps only he thought he was capable of. Absolutely unplayable. The most devastating performer in Serie A. Three goals for Milan today. All of them were provided by Rafael Liao. And the Rossoneri surfing on the crest of a wave.
Mateo Hernandez, who may well win the award for the goal of the season with that sensational lung-busting run to make it 2-0 against Atalanta. Another of their world-class performers. What a season it's been for him off the pitch as well. He's become a father. He's signed a new contract. He is delighted to be in Milan. He's delighted to be at Milan. And certainly silverware will only go to sweeten the deal. seems the Frenchman nowhere to find a booze. Giroud had a big magnum of champagne and Pierre Kalulu has also got his hands on a big bottle of bubbly. But no one saw him emerging from the shadows. Just a bright young talent from the Lyon Academy who'd never played first team football. He was considered a right back. He's become one of the best centre backs in Serie A. And that swagger is the same self confidence he shows on the pitch. Marco Lazatic didn't really get much of an opportunity, but he's still part of this winning group after his signing in January. And now for Kyle Tamori. What a signing that was. January of last season. He's won. He's earned plaudits for his ability to speak Italian, but above all, he has been praised by all observers of Italian football because he is an outstanding defender. He's a quiet leader. He's the man who has put his arm on Kalulu's shoulder. And the Englishman has certainly made the right move in securing a switch to Serie A. In nailing his colours to Milan's mast. <laughs> Simon Kier. And this will be a very popular ovation indeed. So often. Milan's leader on the pitch. Injury deprived the Rossoneri of his services for much of the campaign. He's been a frustrated onlooker, but he's certainly lent his voice to plenty of team talks, motivational chats. And there you can see just what a popular figure he is with his teammates. He, along with Ibrahimovic, the two transformative figures at Milanello. Alessandro Florenzi, another signing that chipped in, that free kick goal at Empoli, that wonderful finish off the bench of the Ventigori on his return from injury, showing that he still has something to offer at the highest level. Rejected by Roma, welcomed into the fold by Milan. generation after Cesare and then Paolo now it's Daniel Maldini and that is a father who's beaming with pride leave aside his role as technical director for a moment any father would be absolutely delighted to see his son win the league but even more so when it is three generations of Rossoneri Maldini Picking up silverware. 
And now Junior Messias, the fairy tale personified from playing in the lower leagues, from delivering electric appliances, lugging fridges in Turin. Relegation with Crotone last season, but Milan saw something in him. And in the latter stages of this journeyman career, Junior Messias can now proudly claim he too is a Scudetto winner. Rade Krunic, who must have done some brilliant work on the training ground in recent weeks to convince Stefano Pioli he was the right man to be picked from the start in three crucial games. He played from the first whistle in Verona. He did likewise against Atalanta at San Siro. He was picked today from the start. An understated role his, but nonetheless an important cog in what is a team effort, not too many shimmering stars. Timoe Bakayoko joining Ibrahimovic in lighting up for the occasion. Finally, they can put their feet up. It's been tense, it's been very nervous. But the cigar shows that Milan are top of the pile. They are the champions and no one will be taking that title away from them. Forget the critics, forget the insinuation, the innuendo, the claims that Inter were the better team. Milan have proven on the pitch they are the best side. Matteo Capia, another player from the academy, the native of Bustarsizio. He also played his part. Got into double figures for appearances in all competitions. Seven of those from the start. There, when called upon, played relatively recently as well in the game against Genoa when Calabria was out. Kalulu switched across to right back. Campia always there when called upon. And now Salamakis. The live wire. He's always got that infectious smile on his face. Constantly being told what to do by Stefano Pioli. Determined that he keeps his tactical discipline, keeps his shape. But he's another young player who has a bright future ahead of him, Alexi Salamakas. He won't turn 23 until late next month. And that's the most encouraging thing about this Rossoneri crop of players. They have, for the most part, bright years ahead. Might be a swan song for Giroud and Ibrahimovic. But there's a core to this team. But he's still very young. And now from Kessier. And he will leave with a very different reputation to the pair that left the club last season on a free transfer. Donnarumma, a pariah. Chalonolu, even worse than that after moving to Inter. But Kessier will leave the club at the end of his contract. But he does so with his head held high, having scored in the all important match, just as he did last season, incidentally. A brace in Bergamo to seal the Champions League. A goal here at Sassuolo to sew up the Scudetto. Antonio Mirante, the third choice goalkeeper. It's an important dressing room figure, that symbolic role, one who has to chivvy up the troops, keep them switched on and smiling and focused. And he would have spent 
several hours with Mignon, Tatarushano too. He'd be a great person to ask about the brilliance of Mike Mignon, seeing it at close quarters. time for the head coach chided by his mother that he'd never won anything but just 40 kilometers from his hometown of Parma Reggio Emilia acclaims Stefano Pioli the normal one no fanfare goes about his business quietly has huge trust in this group of players and all the support team around in the senior management his coaching staff but he is the face of this, and Teo Hernandez giving him a soak. <laughs> Stefano Pioli defying his critics, taking a bit of a detour on the route to glory. Not exactly presentable for Luigi De Siervo, but allowances will be made. And finally, the club captain. Surely his last appearance for Milan, he got on the pitch. And he's been rewarded for his patience. Romagnoli, often one of the better players in some weaker Milan sides down the years. He's not played as much as he might have liked this season. But he will leave the club as a champion. And he will be the captain that lifts it off the Scudetto trophy too. And now, the formalities at an end. Romagnoli will get his individual medal. And finally, as of quarter to nine, on the 22nd of May, we can once again proclaim Milan the champions of Italy. The Rossoneri Renaissance is complete. After 11 years, once again, Milan are the champions of Italy. It's they who wear the crown for the 2021-22 season. Victorious again today, half a dozen wins to close it out. Their 19th title of their history, and they have taken the crown off Inter. And from this day forth, at least for another season, the rest of the clubs across Italy will be looking up at Milan your champions for the 2021-22 season. That's all from me, Patrick Hendrick, here at the Mape Stadium in Reggio Emilia. I'll leave you with the final score, Sassuolo nil, Milan three, and above all, a reminder, in case anyone needed, that Milan are the champions. Good night. Stefano Pioli with his grandchildren there. A wise old head savouring the moment. And his grandpa is a champion, a winner. Picked a good shirt too, Olivier Giroud, number nine. And he grabbed a couple of goals today. 
quite rightly, they've managed to sort out a rendition of Pioli's on fire. Mape Stadium obliging for the Milan party. And this will be absolutely deafening once it reaches the chorus. joy for the Rossoneri, it has become their anthem, their calling card this season. The rendition of Pioli's on fire greets the team before every home match, they brought it on the road here. It was the players that first started it. And those flames have spread, that fire has kept burning inside them. This is very much Stefano Pioli's triumph, and some people just still can't believe it. They can't get their head around what they've witnessed tonight and what they have also experienced all season long. Pioli asking for respect and for people to clear the way, but everyone wants a selfie, and everyone wants to recall this moment. And this will not be the last time you hear Pioli's on fire either. to make sure he comes away unscathed, Stefano Pioli, not for any malice, perhaps just a touch of over-exuberance, but they need him intact and back at the helm for next season as they embark on a season where they'll begin, certainly as champions, perhaps as favourites. They'll have a good chance as well of reminding everyone all about their European pedigree, going into pot one for the Champions League draw. We'll have the great prospect of that Super Cup between Milan, the Italian champions, and Inter, the winners of the Coppa Italia. Pioli's on fire, reads the T-shirt. Pioli's on fire, goes the soundtrack. And once again, it is a huge congratulations to the best team in the land. Fittingly, Pioli's on fire gives way to the most recognisable anthem when it comes to victory and triumph. Milan are the champions.